Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here at Hannover Fair 2013. I invite you to have a seat, have a drink and uh, ask questions as we are a public forum. You're invited to raise your hand whenever questions come up to your mind. I come around with a microphone. My next guest is the head of the fuel cell division of EWE, EVE Research Center, Next Energy. And this company develops solutions for the energy supply of the future, dealing with fuel cells, energy storage, and photovoltaics. Please welcome Dr. Alexander Dick on stage. Thank you. Dr. Dick, nice to have you here. Sit down, please. Yes. So, um, Maybe my first question will be since when you're operating your research center and uh, what kinds of applications are you researching on? So the Next Energy was founded in 2007 and uh, we are operated in our new facility uh, since 2009 where we look on photovoltaics in, in Synthrum Silica where we operate for, for energy or we make research for energy storages also for the automotive applications and where we make micro CHP for small households and supply them with energy and heat. So uh, we talk, we're talking about uh, energy uh, management systems for buildings right now. For sure. That's, yeah. that's a fantastic word for that. Um, energy, man energy management system for buildings is the ex exact the phrase we use for that, um, where we fulfill the demand for heat and electric energy from the bottom side up, where it's efficient and you get a higher efficiency in total for the, for the households or small energy builds, industrial buildings. Okay, so let's talk about the status quo. We, are, um, we already mentioned the topics fuel cells, energy storage systems and photovoltaics. These are three different topics. Maybe we can start with the photovoltaics because that's where uh, the household system starts. Uh, what's the status quo about this technology? So photovoltaics are at the moment at the, a little political difficult decision way. Um, so the price we just re recommended in the last um, talk we, ha we hear, um, they are uh, already cost effective. So uh, the price for the kilowatt hour is below 20 cents per for kilowatt hour. So we must think about the next day without an EEG to build in more photovoltaic plants on the roof and to couple them in for a more efficient energy storage way to use your, the energy you collect from the sun for your own. Yeah, so let's, let's get to that point first, um, the, the sun that you collect for your own. Um, at the moment, I think uh, we are sending 100% of the energy that we are gaining from our photovoltaic systems uh, to the grid. Um, but yes. yeah, there are political changes right now, so um, we have to come to a higher self-usage rate, right? How can we do this? The one point is to store the, the part of the energy you didn't use at the moment inside an energy storage, about, for sure a battery, or a redox flow battery, something like that and you take it out in the night where the sun is normally not shining. So, mm -hmm. and to fulfill the demand from the, from, from the site, you, you use it in the later hours, where, where normally we have to work on, on, on noon, um, and couldn't use all the energy that is produced during, um, during the day to, to spend it for, for our own. Only if you have some uh, units that have a power on demand that switch on our, ourselves only that is that they recognize that the sun is shining and you collect enough energy to, to promote your own fridge to operate with the power that, that you receive or the washing machine is still available to start independent from your press on the button. So photovoltaic systems are already um, high efficient working or are there any research topics you're into? It's a price. It has to decrease more and more, mm -hmm. and um, we are now at the, at the level where where they could run nearly on the, on their own um, legs. So, uh, but they're still at the moment. It's, 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 uh, the change comes very hard. So it's not a soft change that refunding get done on down. It's more than okay now. Yeah. 
turn it off. <laughs> okay. That's the crisis that is meant happening the crisis. there. Yeah. Um, okay, we were already talking about the storage systems. Um, does it mean that we need better batteries? The batteries must be stable, and if you buy a system that store energy, you want to make it run for 10 to 15 years. So you, you have to cover the full lifetime. So that's what, what you have to need. It's, you have to understand the degradation processes inside the battery and inside also the photovoltaic. Mm -hmm. What kind of degradation processes are going on there? So one degradation process is to use only the, the range of the battery that it's uh, a HLC mode. So it's higher than 20% of the deep of discharge and not higher than 90%. Then degradation process processes started, and they end up in finally the worst case scenario that the battery was damaged and maybe also can run in an unsafe mode. Mm -hmm. And that's not good for a small household, of course. <laughs> it, will be it will be an insurance problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What uh, can fuel cells? Um, how can fuel cells support this? And uh, what kind of problems do we face here? So we will have some days where the sun will not shine and the battery storage will all be only be for the daytime or a m most focused for three days. Mm -hmm. Then they will run out of space. But it's nearly obvious that the winter is more than three cloudy days. Um, yes, so especially you, this year. <laughs> if you want to fulfill your power demand on, on, a, on a basic level, a micro CHP system could be a fruitful basis to earn or convert energy most effective if you use the energy you need for your daily shower, hot, sh normally hot, like most likely hot shower. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the second point is um, the electric demand you, you want to have uh, to fulfill your economic life with all the things Get my here. hair dryer going on. And <laughs> but you don't want to fulfill the power of the hairdryers, so mm -hmm. you will always take the, the overpower from the, from the grid, but the main power, the basic power, will take in from the fuel cell. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we have degradation processes in the fuel cell as well, I guess. What, what could that be? The same topic, same t partly the same components as in a, as in a battery, uh, so the electrochemistry is nearly the same. You have some state of charges or changes of voltages that are not healthy for the fuel cell. And you have to avoid them from the system side that the stages are, a lot, are running on long term. And so you operate this fuel cell in a smooth motion, like the solar, solar economic, um, so that the fuel cell has um, the time to follow the, the demand, even to s shut down smoothly and sh start up not in seconds, so the startup, it's not like in a car, you have to turn around the key and the car must run. So the, the fuel cell system in the household couldn't run, get up in two hours. And that's enough to start up then. But you want to get it to run for 5,000 hours and more. Yeah, of course. But you use other materials in the fuel cell as you use um, in, in the battery. So um, let's get it down to the materials and what kind of degradation you, you have there. In detail, for sure. So in, in the fuel cell, for example, you use platinum particles um, that, li that like to move. And they aggregate, and so the particles uh, get ma larger and larger. But you l lose surface then, or they get, get out of the system and go somewhere to the environment. And you avoid this, for sure. Then one of the cost-effective parts is the platinum yeah. at all that drives also the fuel cell, and uh, you don't want to get it to the wastewater. Mm -hmm. So, and for that we look also which operation modes are bad or not so healthy for the fuel cell to operate them for sure, also the 20, 40 or 80,000 hours. In case uh, the system operator don't want to change the fuel cell stack during a lifetime. Yeah, of course, but there are other applications where you might need a fuel cell running just about five years or I don't know what kind of range or years we, we are talking about here. In a micro CHP system, 10 years will be the minimum. Okay. So I will not think about my heating system for the next 15 years, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> 
So, um, so what kind of systems or what kind of materials are you researching on? You mentioned the platinum uh, as a as a um, component of the catal catalyst. Yes, as also the platinum is um, put down on the on the, on the MEA mm -hmm. as a catalyst surface. Then the GD was the MEA, MEA was also integrated with the GDL, and the GDL it's like a foam. So when you if all if the fuel cell operated and it was compressed and expanded and compressed and expanded and after 5,000 cycles uh, a foam will not be the same as, as a foam at the early beginning. It so gets they, filthy. It will sticky. be have, yeah, sticky, <laughs> or so it some, some fibers will break. Mm -hmm. So and we have to, we look on those details. We could look on with a um, micro CT, micro chromatography inside this component and look how particles will handle and how the material will react on different behaviors and which pressures are not so uh, useful to, to, or to bring the fuel cell to a better life. Okay. I remind the audience that you uh, have the opportunity to ask questions whenever they come up to your mind. So just raise your hand if there are any questions coming up. Um, okay, so what, when you found out that a certain material is suffering from its age too much, what's the next step uh, of research then? Do you invent new materials? Do you, what do you do? One interest we have additional to in invent some new materials and also avoid platinum as a cost extensive material. That's um, right, yeah. So if you could cut the cost for the catalyst um, by 90%, that sounds like a good story. And the story could be afforded by the alkaline fuel cell, where you switch over the, the reaction of the hydrogen oxidation process to the, from pH 1 to pH 14. Mm -hmm. And then you could also use silver, nickel, or cobalt alloys as a catalyst material. And this is really the, the stack will be a little bit larger in case that the reaction through the membrane will be a little, not as fast as a, through a proton membrane, but um, you avoid the costs and so that the, the system could be much cheaper than it was today. Much cheaper but as robust as a platinum? Uh, that will catalyst? be the question from us as a research yeah. institute. <laughs> uh, we look for that and uh, the story we'll tell in five, up to five years. We look on this topic with partners, uh, maybe not so interesting for the industry at the moment, but we, we hope and see that it will be interesting in the two or three years when the system comes near and near. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I already noticed that we're running out of time. Um, uh, maybe last question. Why do you think the fuel cell has not made it to the market as quickly um, and numerous um, as it should have? Costs are always an issue, so you have to make a benefit story for the who, for the people who, who spend the money on it. So and at the moment the investment costs are still one hurdle to make a successful market introduction. Mm -hmm. The systems run fine, so we make some system tests in our lab already, also for some customers from industry, and we see that we could really achieve good results to see the reliability, to see, see the stability of the stack, and even the to, to make changes from the stack to follow the, uh, the, the energy demand in some fractions uh, qu quite fine. But there is still some step to go to bring the cost down and make the, the customer visible that he could get some money from it. So when a, cust when a company asks when will be my return on investment, um, four years must be or four years is the last number he like to get his money back. Okay, so it's the minimum, you think? The maximum. The maximum. It, the minimum is two months, will also be fine. Okay. <laughs> well, that would be a great perspective, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, Dr. Dick, then uh, thank you very much um, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. And if there are any further questions coming up, then you can follow Dr. Alexander Dick to his booth number D50, D57. It's right over there, right? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>